19, 2023. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Here. At this time, I'd like to make a statement. First and foremost, we hope that today's events brings closure and healing to the victims, their families, and all that are involved. As has been reported earlier today, Trustee Steve Kent has been found guilty of a felony charge tampering with evidence. Good. While the conduct leading to today's events is extremely repulsive, we welcome the opportunity to move Austin Helm forward. In order to do so, we will be in contact with the Mahoney County Prosecutor's Office, the Attorney General's Office, the Ohio Ethics Commission's, and the Ohio Secretary of State's Office to ensure the process of removing is initiated as soon as possible. Out of respect for the American justice system and all involved, we will wait for sentencing and subsequent appeals to make further statements. While the entire situation is extremely unfortunate, we are committed to the continuing, oh, you have to put a word in there, I can't say. <laughs> we work together, right? We, uh, we're very committed to Austin Town's growth and development of Austin Town, so we look forward to now, ending this, uh, moving on, and doing what's right for the residents and ensuring that Austin Town thrives and grows the way we all know it can. As a township, I'm looking forward to moving forward in prayers for all involved. At this time, I'm going to do an introduction. Our director of our senior center is Jim Henshaw. Our park supervisor, Todd Schaefer. Our Fire Chief, Andy Frost III. Our Police Chief, Robert Gavalier. Our Zoning Inspector, Darren Cabell. Our Township Administrator slash Road Superintendent is Mark Dapolito. Off to my immediate left is our Fiscal Officer, Lori Wood. <coughs> Off to my left is Mr. Santos Trustee. And I am Trustee Monica <coughs> Deepers. At this time, I need a motion to approve minutes of the regular meeting on July 23rd, 2023. So moved. And I second that. I think this is Deaver. Yes. Yes. Um, at this time, is Parker Lane here? Is Parker Lane here? He's not here tonight. We have a proclamation for Parker Lane, and it seems like he's not here. I don't know if he didn't know about it. Or Okay, we'll have him. We have time. We'll have him come back. We have a nice certificate here for him. And we can go with the administration report at this time. Administrator? No? All right. Um, first thing I'd like to make everyone just a uh, take a public space announcement. The Army National Guard uh, reached out to us. And they will be having their open house um, at 475 Victoria Road on August 19th. Um, they'll be doing some demonstrations on some of their vehicles. Um, on our ongoing projects here, we have 2022 resurfacing uh, underway. We expect that to finish up in the next week or two. Um, had some good success so far with that project, although we we expect a couple change orders because we were able to extend a couple streets. Um, with 2023 stormwater, it is just about wrapping up, and we are working with full control to prepare the 2023-2024 OPWC grant application that leaves to our patient. Um, the next thing I'd like to address is uh, you know a topic that I've seen some concern about lately. And, um, you know, from our side, Trustee Santos sort of learned of this um, on an unrelated visit with Eastgate. 
the state of Ohio is planning a roundabout for New Road and 46. Um, this is the only documentation that I'm aware of in the state of Ohio, which, you know, we're out to be get by, by happenstance. Um, so I know we've heard some concerns. We've got a couple of letters about that. Um, slide that up there and see wants to look at it later. You know, we're, we're here to hear your comments on it, but, you know, right now, you know, I'd say a lot of us here in the township are not excited for this, although it is sort of beyond the reach of what township government can do. It is the intersection of a state road and a county road, which means we are left with very little jurisdiction. In most instances where a state road crosses a county road, the state controls. Where a county road crosses a township road, the county controls. Uh, we are unfortunately the bottom of the totem pole uh, in that respect. So there's there's not a whole lot we can do. The next thing I would like to do is thank um, one of our veterans here, John Roberts Belant. He uh, was nice enough to donate a light to replace a broken light at the uh, War Memorial on Pony Avenue. Um, I'd also like to thank Fred from our road department who, who was able to go out and install that for us um, rather expediently because they were playing a memorial service. So thank you for that donation. That's greatly appreciated. And um, I believe that's it for my report. But I do have a couple of motions on the agenda. If I can have a motion to assign the following surplus vehicles in the respective departments for the road department. Yes. Um, if I could have a motion to approve the purchase of a 2021 Chevy Silverado 1500, um, Greenwood Chevrolet, and including the following trade-ins, um, this vehicle will replace the current 2021 sign truck and further authorizing all documents necessary to secure the purchase and the delivery of this vehicle. The purchase of this vehicle shall not exceed $3,864 after all the trade-ins are considered. So moved. Second. Mr. Beaver? Yes. Mr. Sanders? Yes. I'd like to explain to the board uh, the purchase of the three Ford interceptors. Every year we purchase three, uh, three vehicles from state purchasing, and uh, this year Juan chose Ford out of Cleveland, I believe, or Bedford had that state purchasing for the Ford interceptors, which we ordered three cars from them, and we always get white. Uh, a week ago, I was notified from Juan Trucks that Ford quit making the vehicles uh, for this year. So a lot of police departments were left without uh, without getting new Fords that they ordered. I contacted McCandless Ford in Pennsylvania. They have state purchasing price there for Pennsylvania, Ohio. They had three uh, Ford Explorers on their lot. They had maybe six of them, but they had three of them in one color. So we'll have three silver ones added to our fleet here instead of white. Just so you know, and why we changed from one close to these people here. And am I believe that we get three new ones and, and, and get rid of three because of high mileage and problems so that we don't have any issues? Yeah, usually the cars have about 125,000, get about three years out of them so uh, every three years or that's why every year we try to buy three of them and this is what you obviously pre-plan every year and that's within your budget doesn't yes. get exceed or anything yes that's, that's why for the yes. public know that the budget's for this and you know 
job staying up there. And it was at the beginning of the year that we started this, and it just took this long period of time to get these vehicles yeah, in. Well, we stock. usually order in January or February, usually January, and the cars don't come in until about June or July. And like I said, uh, first or second week in August, I was notified here they quit making the vehicles for this year. It took a long time then. Longer than normal, correct? Yes. Okay. We need a motion to approve the purchase of three four interceptors, not to exceed $130,000. So moved. Second. Mr. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Jeters? Yes. Mr. Jeters? Yes. Chief, do you have anything else for us tonight? No. Do you have anything for Chief? I do not. Fire Chief, Kenny Frost. Well, I'm asking the board uh, for a motion to hire Jacob Pyatt as a full-time paramedic replacement for Brandon Davis. Uh, Brandon left us for another department. Uh, again, this is not additional. This is just uh, a replacement. So, oh, sorry. Mr. Pyatt, motion to accept Brandon Davis as a full-time paramedic Prior. 
most of the fast following months it'll meet all, all of the following criteria. So what? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Sean Wilfong for the fine job with the Austin Town Night Out uh, on August 1st. And I'd like to thank our uh, ABC Fire Department for participating in that. Uh, Secondly, uh, just a reminder, our concerts are every Tuesday night from 7 to 8.30 uh, for the rest of this month. And the four concerts in September will be from 6 to 7.30 because of the uh, sun starts going out a lot sooner in September. And uh, folks end up going home before the concert's over, plus the bands have to blow it up. So uh, the month of September will be 6 to 7.30. And lastly, the this that uh, Mr. Kent and Mr. Dapolito and I are together in the park is now being completed. Uh, and they will come up with a delivery will be, will be done. Uh, we've always worked pretty hard out there to get this stuff done. Uh, we have one more thing left to do over at Wedgewood. Uh, came, I'm sure they came down after the list of the names, but once we get that cleaned up, uh, we'll have to We've had a quite crowd at the concerts. It was very nice, but then I was there the other night. Extremely nice crowd. Yes. Very good band. Yes, they were. Very Definitely good. have that. We need a motion to accept the engineering service proposal from Thomas Oak and Associates for the Austin Town Township Park Septic System Replacement 2023 for the sum of $6,000. So moved. Second. Mr. Santos? Yes. Mrs. Deaver? Yes. <laughs> I love more drums. Can we just do that? Sorry, guys. Yes, that's all I have. At this time, the senior center, Jim Hentall. Okay, we've got a couple of new things we're in the works right now. We're working on a uh, program for stress management uh, for people who are stressed. I'll be there. <laughs> My entire staff decided they wanted to come to I want to be there. Okay. <laughs> and that, that'll be starting. We haven't got it all worked out yet. Uh, we also will have a program coming up on uh, women's self defense classes coming up. So if you can't take your stress out one way, we'll take it out another way. <laughs> so that's coming up. And uh, our budget court is in and it's working. People seem to enjoy it. It's catching on fast. We do have. A couple of logistic issues we're going to work out, and I have no idea about how to handle that because I have to put up and take it down almost every other day. So it's inflatable, so it's easy to do. In fact, I did it before I came over here this evening. So, uh, it's felt well received, and I did order some, or get in some uh, light boxing balls because some of our seniors say they can't handle that big heavy ball, so I got some light ones. I don't know. Um, I've heard a lot of comments about them stirring the wine. You got the wine going on there. Oh, they wine, seem to yeah. be enjoying, enjoying stirring the Our wine. Our little vintner sitting over here. <laughs> yeah. they seem Carol Rickard like takes care of all our wine making and has well, Thank you, Carol. I've heard a lot of compliments on your wine. You guys, that's well, right. they, they're we enjoying it. Her one of the wines that she tutored last year to the Festa Show at Canfield. All right. Festa so, Show at Canfield. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah they, um, they have heard a lot of comments about that. I'll bring to that. Anything else? Yeah, anything else for us? Okay. Um, Arthur School Officer Lori. I really don't have anything to say tonight. I just have my report that I need to review. Okay. Motion to accept the live report submitted to the board for review. A through E for agenda. So moved. Second. Yes. New business. We need a motion to approve advances from general fund to 197000 to gasoline tax. So moved. And second that. Yes. 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 Motion to authorize Mark Dapolito to execute documents on behalf of the Board of Trustees for the purpose of requesting convert the fictitious license. So moved. Second. 
might explain that. Thing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Real quick, that's just for um, the Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles requires to have a signatory for the uh, police officers that require covert plates, and there are statutes that govern which plates can be covert and which plates are not covert. So I am the person that gets to make the application for that along with our police chief. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jaber? Yes. Mr. Santa? Yes. Motion to limit public comments to two minutes per speaker per meeting. This rule shall remain in effect for all subsequent meetings until altered by the board. So moved. Second. Before we, sorry. Before we say anything on this, um, we did we did the two minute, but if there's something up there that is very interesting or we want to make it, then let them speak longer than the two minutes. We will have the power to do that. We can put a motion in and say we would like Mr. John to speak longer than two minutes. So I just wanted to make that comment. If you want to say more about that, you can. Just to reiterate what our trustee Deaver says, um, I use the bathrooms as an example of the park. Um, you come up here, you just some individuals will have a tendency of just repeating the same thing for five, 10, 15 minutes, and it only really took two minutes to get their point across. But they're here five, ten minutes later. So this right here is just gives us to let you guys know, hey, we're going to cut it off. But if there's something that you guys are presenting and you have a long list of items, you're not covering the same thing over and over again. You're covering obviously a major topic, but you're talking in great detail. We obviously will afford you the opportunity to make sure your voices are heard. This is to make sure our job is to make sure these meetings are smooth, fluid, fluent, and we make sure we actually don't spend all night just listening about. Same thing over and over again. I'll have everyone here. Um, it, it's also there to make sure that everybody that wants to speak gets an opportunity to do so. Um, we don't want to make sure that everyone that wants to get up has an opportunity to do so. Mr. Champion? Yes. Mrs. Deaver? Yes. Mayor Mitchell, Control whether to request a hearing on notice of legislation authority on the transfer from LJ Sobs Incorporated DBA, the Beverage Depot, 6300 Mahoney Avenue, Austin Township, in Ohio, 44515, permit 506-3250, permit class C1, C2, D6 to Mahoney Valley Beverage Depot, LLC, doing business as the Beverage Depot, 6300 Mahoney Avenue, Austin Township, in Ohio, 4451, permit 5435, 352, permit class C1, C2, and D6. So moved. Second. Mrs. Deavers? Yes. Mr. Sanchez? Yes. So at this time, we're going to take a public response, and it will be on camera, and who would like to go up on camera tonight? Okay, go ahead, sir. Uh, good evening, everybody. Of course, everybody is aware of the new roundabout. Excuse me. Put in. Wait, that's your name and address. Uh, Joe Scary, 5349 South Syracuse. Uh, and so, to move forward, you know, the state wants to put two and a half million dollars into an unneeded roundabout at State Route 46 in New Road in Austin Town. And until recently, township trustees and residents were unaware of this. I know we all heard about the news. so. I'm hoping uh, tonight the two things will happen. I'm going to ask the trustees at a later point here to uh, approve a couple of things, uh, things that we may be able to do. Uh, I hate to be, even though it's uh, preliminary, it's better to be proactive than reactive. So we've still got two or three years to get involved in this stuff. So anything could happen. So I would like the suggestion instead of that money being used there, that the funds be. Uh, spent for eliminating through traffic. Through traffic is traffic that's non-stop in Austin Town. Their destinations during rush hours are North, State Route 11, Trumbull County, 680 Youngstown, or Columbia County South, at Route 11, State Route 11. ODOT needs to address these problems by installing on and off ramps at Kirk Road and State Route 11, which would eliminate a lot of that traffic from State Route 46 north and south, and put it where it belongs, on the freeway, State Route 11. 
Our residents and past township trustees have requested this access point before your time, over 20 years. <laughs> However, ODOT always had excuses. The, <clears throat> the morning and evening traffic rush hours, dumps that traffic on Route 18 Mahoney Avenue becomes horrific. And due to the negligence of ODOT not having northbound or southbound <clears throat> access to Sea Route 11 on Kirk Road, that creates that problem. Since traffic, uh, since through traffic coming from Canfield Township South, Kirk Road, Austin Town South Side are unable to access that State Route 11 at Kirk Road, it's forced down State Route 46 North and South. Uh, and then the traffic that goes 46 North connects into Route 18 on the Indian and then eastward again to 11. Their destinations again, Trouble County and Columbia County. If you look at this small map that I've prepared, you've got Canfield here, here's 46, and here's Route 11. There's three dots. Here we are, here Canfield Center is, and the one in the middle is Kirk Road. Cannot access that middle dot. And they run parallel to each other. Kind of ridiculous, especially when you got most of Canfield and all of Southern Township cannot get on Route 11 then. It's just terrible. So, anyways, uh, in summary, again, everything's preliminary, but we need to be proactive. So, hopefully, tonight I'm requesting the trustees to prepare a letter to ODOT objecting the. Uh, <coughs> roundabout at 46 in Kirk Road. I'd like them to suggest to prioritize that money for State Route 11 in Kirk Road. I also have a couple other things to upgrade the traffic signal at 46 on the west side. Uh, there's no north arrow to go to 18. <laughs> I think you're, you're, you're smiling. I know you know there's no left. <laughs> no arrow there. So that's causing a problem over there too. Also, I'm in Lexington Place, and we sure like to have a red light there because that traffic, it's almost impossible to, to make the left to south. And uh, what we're currently doing is using the red light at Villacris. So you come out, you make a right, okay, you're going north, you go into the parking lot at Phoenix Therapy Center, turn around and use that light to go south. So we're forced to do that. Finally, if trustees were also to draft an appropriate petition to ODOT, I would like to supersede that as far as gaining signatures. So maybe the more signatures we get in the next couple years from its residents uh, to ODOT, maybe they'll see the seriousness here. And again, that needs to be drafted uh, formally, and that's something that you guys can do. Uh, also, I called Mahoney County, and uh, that is an ODOT project, the county's not involved. Anybody wishing to contact them, inquire or complaint, can call 330-549-2511. Or you can write to ODOT District 42088 South Arlington Road, Akron, Ohio, 44306. Alternate phone number would be 330-786-3100. So uh, these are some copies for the trustees. If you need more, you can make them. So anyway, so we're requesting two things. Possible peti uh, petition be drafted by the township, and secondly, a letter of objection to ODOT. Is it possible for our staff here tonight to okay that? We will have to discuss that. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you for your time. Thank you. I think I've made the two minutes. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> You're good. You're good. Well, this is what we meant by it's, uh, it's an exception to this. We meant you, you were on point, you kept it flowing, you kept it good, sure. and we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, anyone else on camera? Come on up, sir. Steve Drucky, 5600 Federal Crossing. 
I guess it's already been covered. Last month I asked for a turning lane on that light at New Road. Turn around, you get turn around. So that's great. You need to do it. On a serious note, knowing our judicial system, Mr. Kent was found guilty. That doesn't mean that he's going to serve time immediately. Is he legitimately and officially off as a trustee based on his record? Mr. Sir, we cannot engage in that conversation right now. We're awaiting some legal advice on that topic. Okay. Well, I don't agree with you saying that because many of us have signed petitions to get rid of him. I was gone for the weekend and my wife saved me two papers from the vindicator and all it did was show great pictures of him as being an Austin Town trustee. I believe that if you're sincere about making Austin Town great again, you need to move fast on getting rid of his nameplate and you can't have a trustee with a felony. I believe that's a felony, if I'm, not, if I'm wrong. A felony cannot run for a trustee or public office. So I would like you to, to take his name away. And also, as citizens of Austin Town, do we have a right to know what your salary is? Yes. What is your salary? Rounded 20, 23, 24 a year. So there should be some money that should be taken back or taken away from the trustee for the rest of the year. And the last thing before I run out of time, is your term up this year? Mine is not, no sir. No sir. Okay, well that's good. But like I say, it was sort of, it was sort of strained that you guys were under knowing that you had a, a felon on your panel. That's all I have to say. Sir, just to clarify my comments, the, the board, it, it, it's our current understanding that the board does not proceed in the removal process. It, it would be the, either the Ohio Attorney General, the Prosecutor's Office, the Secretary of State, uh, but we will be working with those as, as the- Isn't that sort of ridiculous so. that there's a gentleman who really didn't do nothing to help the township? You got two folks that had to do all this hard work, had to hear all our complaints, and I'm not alone. I'm sure there's other people that were up here talking, maybe a little bit even more concerning than I was. But I knew some facts behind it. I knew he was guilty. And I came and you heard me up here many months talk about it. For him to step down and just save the face of Austin Town. So the facts proved out correct. Thank you. Thank you. Sam Swarter couldn't be here tonight, so I'm making a, an announcement on his behalf. We're, we're part of the 9 11 Park Committee. We're going to have a final cleanup there at the park on August 26th at 9 a.m. And if that's a rain up, we'll go the next day on the 27th at 9 a.m. So everything should look great for our, our program on, on 9 11. And that will be at 10 o'clock in the morning. One thing I want to mention about the roundup, uh, there was a very good presentation we had here, but the thing that I really believe will harm Austin Town if that goes into effect, is during the construction, at some point in time, those roads are going to be shut down. That's going to force Austin Town people to you know, use different routes. One of the routes coming off New Road, and it is the only route northbound between uh, 46 and Raccoon Road is Idaho Road. And that would be very disruptive to our schools. So I hope we can take some action here and somehow prevent that roundabout coming to Austin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to come up? Off camera, anybody else? This time we'll hear from Mr. Arts. All right, I'll try to, if everyone knows, I am looking at my phone. The reason being is we have some awards here. They're gonna be coming around 6.45, so I'm trying to figure out how long we need to talk for. So we all can be here and watch the presentation for, for these kids. Um, so I'll talk a little slower. Um, so bear with me one second here. Um, you guys don't know, RSU on movie nights. I had to cancel last Saturdays, as we all know. 
fast out of here. Some wonderful weather. There was some, uh, apparently there was some, uh, is it, uh, like chunks of ice falling from the skies at some place, so we obviously wanted to cancel. Uh, the big update for our uh, Ghostbusters will be this coming Saturday. Same place, the Austin Town Park. Uh, we'll be going around 8.15, 8.20, whenever the sun starts coming down. Uh, but also the following week, we'll have Super Mario Brothers, which is also the following Saturday, which is the 26th. I'm going to spare some time here and get my phone to make sure it's right now. The 26th will be Super Mario Brothers. It'll be the last movie of uh, late summer. Um, I think it's definitely been a great time. I right, see the families come out and have a good time with their kids. Uh, we already set up the trunk or treat. If you guys don't know, last year we had a trunk or treat. It was phenomenal. It was about 1,012 kids. So my dad actually showed up. So we do have the application. If you guys want to set up a vehicle, set up a trunk, you know, kind of a safe way for the, uh, the kids to come out and do uh, trick or treating. I think it's definitely a good time. Um, we'll do our best to make sure it's a bigger event um, this time around. But I have some applications if you guys want to do so. If not, Definitely come out on October 29th with your kids, your nieces, whoever, for yourself. If you guys want to be kids at heart, I know I know last year I was in that dinosaur, which I will not do again this year because I hurt my legs walking. Um, other than that, sorry, that was on two minutes. Okay, I keep going. All right, the roads. I know there was some questions with the roads on how it happens. So please, first, me come up, please feel free to chime in. So the roads that are being done right now, the process for road paving is long. Believe it or not, the roads that are being paved are the people that we took over for. That's how far behind they are, because what happens is our administrator, our superintendent, would go and assess the roads, at which time, obviously, we want to make sure we get our biggest bang for our buck, so we want to apply for grants. Those grants have certain specifications, like how much is it trafficked, how, how big is it, how long how long of an area you guys want to do. So those all get accepted or applied for at OPWC. They review it, that process is long. They finally come back to us and say, hey, these are the roads that we will give you money for. So if they give us money, I'm just throwing roads out there for Hickory Lane. But then we decided not to do that. So we're not going to get that money from OPWC because we're no longer doing Hickory Lane. So the roads that we applied with OPWC, which is the biggest grant funder, we have to use so that way I'm still numbers out there. $100,000 of their money matches $100,000 of our money. Now, yes, we can go and fully fund our road if you decide to. We just pull the full funding out of our own account. However, we want to make sure we get a bigger bang for our buck. Now, previous individuals decide just to hit small portions of the roads, the, the worst of them are the crappiest part of the road, so that way the majority of the people in the red of Austin Town will see, hey, they're doing a lot of roads. I'm not okay with doing just a small portion of the road, unless it's extremely, extremely bad, it needs to get done. And please yeah. tell me if you agree, but after this happens, we are gonna move forward to ensure that the entire road in its entirety is being done, so not these done. patches. Sorry. I so instead of, like I keep saying, we're not half dressed. I mean, like they do half this street and then they don't do we are going to go move forward. We didn't make these plans, like he had said. So next year, hopefully, I think it's our next year, the fall. The fall year. Year. But, and so we still have to wait that long before the street, the full street will be done. At that, that time, before previous administration, we're doing only half the roads. We decided if we're going to do a road, we want to be able to do the whole road. Okay. So go ahead. Yeah, that's no, I'm not getting good. I'm going to try and whatever. But like, excuse my examples here. When you have the you have the joints connected, obviously the joints is what cracks the most. Obviously you'll see it. So what's the point of having five or six of these joints in one road when it's just going to be horrific in the next like two or three years? We want these roads to last at least 15, 20 years so we can get more bang for our buck. The positive side on it, when we do start doing just the entire road in its entirety, we can work with other communities, like a county for example, so that way when they do the bids, they're, the contractors that are looking at these bids, they know it's a bigger bid, you know, more money, more bulk. They're more likely to give us a cheap price. I think we paid, I'm going to be wrong with the number, I don't want to give a wrong number, we paid a lot more than what the majority of individuals did last year for payment, which is not good. So we want to make sure your tax dollars are used effectively and efficiently and as 
stretched out stuff that we have a lot of things taken care of. Again, I'm trying to stretch the clock. Are they here? Are they here? Yeah. Okay, so I'll go then fast. So that's it. RSC, it's a whole long process. If you guys want to know, we'll be more than happy to sit down. Our phone numbers, we all know where Monica works. Charles, we use the Stop by, give her a call, you know. That's fine. I don't have to buy it. Uh, um, by all means. Um, I want to thank State Representative Alex Turner for coming out. Um, he's definitely been, definitely an advocate for Austin now. Coming here, looking at our needs, and informing us on what type of funding is coming up for our real world, so that we can make sure we use our tax dollars most effectively. And you can see some more improvement here at Austin Town. Uh, so definitely thank you for that. Uh, the roundabout, I'll touch on that. I'll show you that too. Your voices will be heard. Uh, we are very disheartened that we were not aware of this. Um, we will be doing a public records request find out what information they have on it, what any type of assessments that they've done. Okay. We'll actually get it populated so we can relay that information. Thank you. Other than that, since the girls are coming in, I'll okay. stop. Okay, all, all I'm going to do is remind everybody about our farmer's market that we have Saturday. Um, Robert didn't mention that, so I'd like to mention that. And of course, we have the continent on our phone Tuesdays. And um, with that being said, we're going to try to get these girls in here and give them what they deserve. So we're not quite ready. We have yeah. two more minutes. You got two more right. minutes? That's right. Oh, I still got four. I got less. You got less? I was just going to look at it. Family fun night. Something that I want to do, I talked to Trustee Deavers about it. She's all supportive on it as well. I would love to bring back a family fun day for our residents. Basically, and this is just football and ideas. We're still in the brainstorming phases, but you guys can come out, you know, there'll be like 10 or 15 bounce houses for the young ones. There'll be events like a kickball tournament, tug of war tournament, four and hole tournament, things that we can come out and take care of and just have a good time. Um, I heard that dunk tanks don't work so well, but you guys have done this before. We just want to bring back, obviously, tightness in our community. We want to be able to, we're a small tight knit town, but we need to bring that back. And I think that's something that would be good. Uh, but then, June 29th, maybe. We're, we're still, if you guys are interested in assisting, um, on this event, by all means, reach out to one of us. We'll let you know when the next meeting is and kind of brainstorm on what we can do to make this a good day. So RSC won't be until 2024, but the sooner we start playing, the more uh, lively and exciting this event will be. And the air like will keep running. Yeah, they're all here. So, I mean, all here, there's 13 of them now, plus a coach. <laughs> the last one, which I brought them, I hear it. I got to work on my chest. Oh, he's here. I got to move by. You guys have been? Yeah, they're all here. One more. One more. One Some of them had volleyball practice today, so that's yeah. why we're trying to stretch this. Just so you know, when they walk in, we need to give them a great round of applause. <laughs> Well, state champs, regional champs. District champs. District champs. Well, not about this, but the men's are going to start picking it up a little bit. Yeah, real solid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would love to see you guys play the men just like before. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, that's why I always shoot it for the reuse for a while. I know. So how is it going to say? I mean, the weather is weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
job is amazing, and we will never forget it. These pro this proclamation, proclamations that are presented to you for Soft Rock District 2 champions, state champions, and regional champions. You'll always be a champion for us in Austin Town. Thank you. The first in Austin history to actually make it to the World Series. Yes. I mean, and believe it or not, every single one of you is from Austin Town, right? Not like the other teams who went <laughs> all homegrown, lifelong residents in Austin Town. So that's phenomenal. So. And we couldn't be any prouder. Every single one of us here are extremely proud. So we wanted to make sure that you girls knew that from each one and every one of us. And we have a proclamation for you and wish you nothing but the best and make all your dreams come true. And I hope to watch you play baseball, softball. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to say something? No, but just thank you. Thank you for the support from, from our whole community, everybody behind us rallying and uh, supporting us all the way. It's been great. Can all the girls face this way for a second? Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Is that our third? Is that right?